Hello everyone. Um, recently I made a video where I compared looking at the world through the lens of trauma-informed care to the perspective of social justice and political correctness. And some people were very interested in me talking about this more. Others were uh, disagreeing with me right off the bat, and that's okay. Um, but for me to really explain my observations on this, I I decided that um, I needed to pick a place to start talking about this, and uh, I've decided on a sort of meta-trauma that uh, affects a lot of people in human services from social work to research psychology to, you know, just psychotherapy. Everyone who works with other people, basically, they, they run into this sort of meta-trauma. And first... I need to explain what traumas are. Um, <clears throat> so, <sighs> trauma is something that uh, negatively affects your life that that you experience. Um, and rather than being something wrong with you, uh, we like to ascribe it as being something that happened to you. And so, most people would accept that medical procedures would cause trauma. Um, anytime that you had to have a surgery that was a scary traumatic experience or like the illness of yourself or a family member or a death of a loved one, um, separation, divorce, uh, natural disasters can cause trauma and people recognize that like from Hurricane Katrina to a tsunami in Indonesia, people understand that that causes trauma. And almost universally, people will recognize that soldiers uh, experience trauma through war. Um, a lot of them come back shell-shocked, is what the term used to be, but now we call it PTSD. Um, and the T in that is trauma. Um, people almost universally recognize that uh, torture, ritualized abuse, um, emotional and physical neglect can cause trauma especially in childhood, um, psychological and emotional abuse, uh, physical abuse, uh, sexual abuse, incest, date rape, and whatnot. And people will um, recognize those as being uh, things that cause trauma without questioning them. And where we start to see people uh, either on the fringes or politically start to question whether or not uh, a trauma is valid is uh, things like when, when somebody has a family member who has a uh, mental health struggle or uh, somebody who uh, grew up with someone who had a substance abuse problem, um, people start to, um, on the fringes, they'll, they'll say, you know, man up, you know, that wasn't that bad for you. Um, and that's where I start to see uh, people not accepting things that are in the in the field accepted as trauma uh, as trauma, but also um, oppression due to uh, race, religion, sexual orientation, class, um, culture, and disability. Um, those are seen as very politicized things that um, some people will balk at that causing trauma in someone's life, but it, it in fact can cause trauma. And one of the things that I see that people hardly ever realize causes trauma, um, even though it, it high, highly correlates to it, is poverty. Um, people just, it, it goes right over their heads that poverty ties into it all. Um, poverty itself can cause trauma. I remember my own grandparents, um, and, and the way that they acted in the 80s when I saw them, when they had gone through the Great Depression and the uh, World War eras, um, and they learned certain habits that they just never got over, even 30 years after the World Wars. You know, they were still doing the same uh, conservation things like recycling and um, never throwing anything away. Uh, my grandfather had a, a collection of jars that he had nailed the caps of the jars to the top of his workbench and he was screwing those jars into the top of his uh, workbench area to hold things like 
uh, nails that he had salvaged out of cabinetry and screws and whatnot. So he would never run out of nails and screws. Anything that was thrown away, they would strip of anything valuable and keep. Um, there was a rubber band collection, a rubber band ball. Um, that's a classic thing. Um, they recycled newspapers and cans and whatnot. And this was just how they knew to live. And this was because they uh, experienced trauma due to poverty. Um, but there, there's another trauma that almost never gets uh, addressed in the public, but it does bias a lot of people in the human services fields, uh, be they uh, social workers, psychotherapists, um, psychological researchers, um, people who just speak publicly about the sciences. All of these people uh, are affected by this thing called vicarious trauma. And what that is, is uh, you hear a bunch of stories about a subject that you deal with a lot, and it starts to affect you. Um, not not necessarily as if those things had happened to you, but it still affects you uh, in ways such as um, somebody... The, the, the worst field to work in for vicarious trauma. Somebody who works with domestic violence cases, a caseworker from that. Um, they might go to work happy, but when they go home, uh, those things really affect people. You know, um, <clears throat> things such as parole officers who deal with sexual offenders, um, they will, will have a very strong reaction to those issues because of their line of work. Um, and in some cases, when people talk about uh, things like that, like domestic violence and sexual abuse and sexual offenders and whatnot, they, they, they tend to um, go beyond just being affected by them to being affected so much that they are willing to bend their own ethics and morals and their own critical thinking with regards to those things. Um, one example would be somebody who speaks publicly about uh, women's issues hearing a lot of women's issues from a lot of her fans and thinking, you know, instead of questioning whether or not something has happened, we should blanketly always listen and believe. Because supporting that person's emotions and supporting them through their trauma is far more important than getting to the bottom of what actually happened. Uh, in their mind, because they have had the vicarious traumas that just pushed their values, skewed them to the point where um, maybe in other aspects of their life they still keep their critical thinking skills intact, but in that case, um, especially to someone's uh, face as they're coming out as, as, uh, as somebody who's crying out, they will immediately be, uh, listen and believe in that uh, moment, and that is important, you know, to not condemn someone when they're trying to come out and say that they were abused. That's that's very important. But to uh, later, after that moment, uh, give up any semblance of, of questioning or, or skepticism as to what actually happened, um, that can be damaging. That can have people get uh, convicted of crimes that they didn't commit. And it has happened because people threw away their critical thinking skills and just decided to um, side with the victim no matter what. No matter uh, what the, the facts would bear out. And so um, the root of this really is vicarious trauma and how people are willing to um, go with their emotions after repeated um, contact with stories from their caseload. Uh, I myself, I, I'm in contact with a lot of people who have criminal records because I deal with uh, substance abuse. And 
I would say that if I let it get to me, I, I would uh, be playing uh, NWA's Fuck the Police every day on my drive home because I hear so many stories of uh, police abuses from my clientele. Um, to the point when I get pulled over by a policeman, which has happened twice this past year. I didn't get a ticket, but um, twice... I, I just had this sinking feeling that nothing good can ever come from this. You know, I don't want to talk to a police officer because, you know, just in, engaging in a conversation with them might lead to me being um, a victim of some sort of abuse of power by a policeman. And these are things that uh, I have to realize that I don't need to be... Um, the most vocal person against police officers all the time. I need to think about what I actually believe about their um, their job and their duties and the risks that they take all the time. And I don't need to be just running on emotion based on what my clients are telling me all the time. I need to, you know, try to put that aside and say what is actually going on here, because. It's not exa exactly in the mission statement of police officers to be um, abusing their power all the time. But if you were to listen to my clients, you would come away with that sort of perspective. So that's the kind of vicarious trauma that I go through. Um, so if you guys uh, want want to talk about any of those traumas and whether or not you believe that those actually exist or actually affect people, go ahead and comment below. Um, and let me know where you would uh, like me to talk about this um, further. I think that, that that actually gives a really good base as to um, how we're going to talk about these parallels between trauma-informed care, social justice, and political correctness. Um, Next, I think I might talk about how all of those three things actually um, have a, a base to them that is good-natured. Laters.